morning, everyone. My name is Abigail Runk. Looking at the discussions this week, we were tasked with reading one of the main articles and now responding to it. Um, one article that jumped out to me was the story of Mary Dyer, um, and that was published by, in the article by Anne Miles uh, from Monster to Martyr representing Mary Dyer. I'm not uh, familiar with her story, hence my interest. Within Miles' article, she does go through and have multiple subtopics, um, wherein she looks at gender roles, the idea of birth and monstrosity, Puritanism. Um, as you read further into it, um, you see um, female-female relationships or a feminist idea. And of all those various subtopics, the most prominent one or at least the most interesting one from a modern perspective, is this idea of monstrosity and birth. Diving further into that, uh, the article by Jonathan Field, which he called The Governor's Two Bodies, Polity and Monstrosity in Winthrop's Boston, indicates that the ideas and Puritanism were so ingrained inside the ministers, magistrates, and the general male community that when these monstrous births happened, which in modern terms would most likely be prematurity or defects, these monsters that were born were due to the heresy that Anne Hutchinson and Mary Dyer were both purporting. They were dissenting against the Puritan idea of the saints, the New England way. They followed the idea in the antinomian movement of free grace, i.e. Um, everyone's a sinner, but you are saved by God's grace, and it's free. You don't necessarily have to work for it. Francis Bremer goes a little further in the historical journal of Massachusetts when they republish just a section of his book, um, one chapter entitled Poor Strong Women, he goes in and gives biographical narrative to Anne Hutchinson and Mary Dyer. Anne Hutchinson, who is the more famously known of the two women, preached and discussed things with Mary Dyer and heavily influenced her conversion. Once she converted into Quakerism, she, Mary went back into Massachusetts multiple times despite banishment, prison trials, very nearly hung, and ultimately she actually did achieve martyr status by being hung the third time she went back into Massachusetts. She had already was already known because of the monstrous birth 20 years earlier before she started ministry in Massachusetts. And so she was remembered for that already, and then coming back in multiple times, essentially circumventing authority, she had another name for herself because of that. Yet Hutchinson is the one remembered in history books, and Dyer not so much, which I did find particularly interesting, um, given that Dyer was hanged for her crimes which would be an achievement of martyrdom, and those achievements of martyrdom are generally recorded more and passed down a little bit further. So I do believe that this that could be an additional inquiry into Dyer. You know, why has her story been set along the wayside even though she essentially died for her cause? But diving back in... To the article itself, um, when looking at liberty's worldview principles, um, a particular one that jumps out here is Jesus Christ is central to human history, principle number two. And if you go into Puritanism and those ideas, God was the center of that lifestyle. God and Jesus were the center. The whole sense of society revolved around the idea of Christianity creating a city on a hill, being God's chosen people, following God's law. So it was essential. Now, it may not be fully embracing what would be modern Protestantism, but it was still very important to that culture. The relationships that P. 
people had with each other, people had with God. Also would have influenced Mary Dyer, particularly uh, referencing back in Miles' article, would have been, and birth, would have been the birth chamber or the female-female relationships that happened because of uh, women coming together and first being primarily uh, looked over by women. This idea is further uh, discussed in Samantha Thomas's article. She dives a little bit further into the idea that with Puritanism, birth was primarily a female era up until obstetrics came about, in which case it changed into more of a male-dominated field, referencing gender roles underneath. So I hope everyone enjoyed the presentation. I look forward to working with everyone. Have a good afternoon.